Okay, so welcome. Am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. Welcome. We uh, before we get Fritz. Fritz on the stage. Uh, I want to. Uh, one of the reasons I set up Web Wednesday is to share good things that are happening in the internet, uh, particularly in Hong Kong. So, uh, actually, we've got one good thing that's happening in the internet in Hong Kong, and we've got one good thing that's happening in the internet in Singapore. You've got to come back to Hong Kong. So, uh, let's invite Marco up to say a few words. What I like about this is it's to do with creativity and it's to do with the internet, and it's Hong Kong. So he's going to share with you a few words about this event that you must go to. Go, Marco. Thanks. Uh, hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so my name is Marco. I'm the festival director of the HK Webfest, um, which will be... Louder, Marco. Louder. Oh, so, okay. Which will be happening at uh, PolyU on June 5th to 7th. Um, Does everybody know where the PolyU is? Yeah. How do yeah, the tunnel. Uh, uh, as soon as you get out of the tunnel, it's there, right? <laughs> Different, yeah, yeah. It's also got a hotel called Icon, right? Right. The university's got into the trade, the hotel, the travel business, which is topical. Oh, they? they make more money out of travel than they do out of students. I didn't know. That. <laughs> no surprise. So, um, okay, so so basically, our festival is about um, transmedia. Um, branded entertainment and... What the hell does transmedia mean? <laughs> does anybody know what transmedia... Put your hands up if you know what transmedia means. Transgender. Nobody knows what transmedia means. <laughs> what does that mean? It means multimedia. It means sound, um, moving pictures and... No, basically it's the, it's the new multimedia. So that would... Uh, you mean it's on the internet? <laughs> Not really. So it's, let's, let's say you have, a, you have a story, and this story is told across platforms. But um, it's a continuous story, you can say it's like a, like a TV series, for example. Right? So each, each chapter is a, um, is a story in itself, and then it's told on various kind of media. So it travels from one medium to the next. To the gotcha. Next. So when is this event? Uh, 5th to 7th. And what's the website? Webfest.hk. Webfest.hk said with a German accent. Webfest.hk. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, actually, I just want to. Ah, you're going to say something. Sorry. So, so the Webfest is uh, is basically for brands and uh, content creators. So what we want to do is connecting brands and content creators and trying to figure out new finance models for transmedia storytelling. Um, trying to figure out new narratives and things like that. So we have Actually, that's very topical. The guy who does the sound, who's mysteriously disappeared, because he's set it all up, runs a company called Brand Beat, Charlie. He's doing content, branded content for Shivers. Charlie uh, will be speaking. Yeah, Charlie will be speaking. That's probably why he's run away. <laughs> but also today, TVB Pearl called me up to ask about this um, phenomenon in Hong Kong called Meidini. You know the micro movie, right? Yes. So is this going to be full of people who make micro movies? Yes, definitely. So we will we will show a bunch of micro uh, films yeah. on the first day, and on the second day it's mainly conference with uh, speakers from France, uh, Spain, Germany, Hong Kong, Singapore. So it's it's a pretty interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you. Good and now I'm sorry we have to downgrade to Singapore, but. <laughs> <laughs> Geographically. Geographically. So, um, this is a company that some of you might have heard of. You might recognize these dirty hands with the dot in them. You see that? Dirty hands with the dot. Branded. So, Branded, uh, one of these companies, is very entrepreneurial, started in Hong Kong, and is creating events about all kinds of topics. So, this lovely lady here, Kelly, not Victoria, is going to say a few words about the event. So, we are hosting Digital and Music Matters in Singapore next week. Um, we're running a music and digital festival. It's got, we have a conference component that looks at the new business models on internet broadcasting. We've got a lot of um, internet entrepreneurs. Um, it's all about innovation and it's basically the entertainment ecosystem under one roof and looking at you know the next level of what broadcasters are looking at um, in terms of bringing their content in online video, monetizing structures, 
um, associated with them because I think we're all watching content online and we're no longer paying for broadcasting channels um, and although they are a very important part of the business, obviously. <laughs> so if you want to meet the big wigs in the entertainment industry, particularly music, please go to this event. It's very well run, extremely professionally run, I have to say. Yeah, so um, um, we've got a big music festival attached to it as well, which is free for the public. But it's in Singapore. It is in Singapore. <laughs> it will come back here one day to the mothership. It is, but we're also running Social Media Matters in September as well, which is all about the business of social media for brands. Um, we've already confirmed Scott Monty, who is the global lead for social media at Ford. So, Woo! Yes. Does everybody, who follows Scott Monty in this room? One person. <laughs> He obviously needs to come to Hong Kong. Yes, he does. Tell him he's got one follower in the whole of Hong Kong. I know who, 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 Do you read his tweets or you just follow him? He reads sometimes. Good, good. Excellent. So, the, the, what's great about these folk is the, they're giving us away. Um, this is a rather nice uh, conference pass, which is worth 1,250 US, right? And if you go to my blog or if you talk to these ladies later, you get 20% off their. their conference pass, right? And it's well worth it. You can meet all kinds of really interesting people. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank you. Excellent. So, where's Bronnie? Bronnie, where are you? Here. Bronnie, Bronnie and I used to work together in a PR firm and we both saw the light. So, Bronnie is now running his own uh, photography company, as you can tell. So, if you need somebody who's a, who's quite a creative photographer, Ronnie.com, entrepreneur, and also WordPress genius. So go and visit his, his site. So let's, let's uh, further ado, let's get um, Fritz, if you can get up here without tripping over. You're doing well. I'm going to take the stage. So a big round of applause for Fritz. <laughs> Who's got his microphone? This one's running out of battery. Hello. Are you in the light? Can you all see Fritz? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> this was designed by my people, isn't that nice? Monopoly. The Chinese internet is a game of Monopoly. This guy knows how to play it. Which, which bit do you own? <laughs> I'm out. You're out. So, um, I've known Fritz for a few years. I'm very excited to have him here because you don't often hear about success stories uh, in China uh, that come to Hong Kong. Usually they stay in China or they disappear to Silicon Valley. So Fritz has come back to Hong Kong. Kind of. Kind of. So I, before we start, I, I looked up some numbers, right? The thing about the internet in China is numbers are always massive and they put Hong Kong to shame. So for those of you who like numbers and they're gonna tweet, Here's some interesting numbers. Let me see. Um, the online travel booking market in China grew 36% uh, year on year, last year. Apparently by the end of this year, there'll be 60 million people in China who will book online for travel. Every day in China, you can refute this later. This comes from one of your competitors, by the way. Um, one million hotels are booked every day in China. But last year there was 138 million people who traveled into China and 77 who left China. I wonder how many of those go back. <laughs> and that used to happen, right? Uh, and within China, this is probably your business, there were 2.6 billion trips, which is, is a massive number. Um, some numbers here that also you might be interested in is that 78% of bookings were booked by mobile and PC, which is compared to call center is 22. So it's very digital, your business. One last figure, there's one big juicy figure here. I see if we can find it. Uh, -da. Can't find it. Anyway, oh yeah, here we go. Among travel focused websites, Sea Trip was the most frequently visited. This is according to the Chinese government, seen it. Again, you can refute this, please do. Sea <laughs> um, trip was most frequently visited, covering 41% of the population on the internet in China, followed by Chunar, 
the business you were formerly involved in. Taobao at 16%, Elong at 8 and 17U.CN, which I've never heard of, 6%. So are those numbers correct? I mean, I, I think those are great numbers. Um, you know, I mean, who are you going to trust? Like an official government body? Or are you going to trust someone like Comscore or, someone, or, or maybe Nielsen? And I think if you ask them, you'd find out who the true number one player is. So who is the true number one player according to Comscore? But they're Americans, right? Can you trust Americans in China? <laughs> I, I, I mean, a, I know this is a political comment, and you know, like, um, so Obama's been, you know, spying on the AP, right? And, and He's spying on Russians as well with guys right, in blonde wigs, right? And if you wear a blonde wig, you're a spy. Right, so, um, <laughs> but you know, it's so so it happens everywhere, and it, and it probably happens in, uh, up north as well. But so everything's relative. So who do you trust relatively more? Right? I mean, I, I think that's how I would look at it. So give us some numbers according to Comscore, who, who's the, the travel industry. Give us some numbers. Actually, before we start, there's one number that I had to ask you, and I want to get it out of the way. How much did you sell Chunar to Baidu for? <laughs> I just want to get it out of the way. You can give a range. You can put it in Remy B to make it sound bigger. Or Lira. Or you can just say no comment. So, um, so Baidu um, invested in Chunar, and there were some press releases on what those numbers were. And, and so Baidu is a strategic investor in Chunar. And what, what were the numbers in the press release? <laughs> I saw two numbers. I, 306 was the first one, then another in, in investment of 60, right? Is that the kind of number? Um, yeah, those two numbers are correct, right. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Get that out of the way. So let, let's talk a little bit about the internet in China. Um, the internet in China has, has, has grown massively fast. I, how did you come up, when you first went to China, you started a business back in 98, is that right? Uh, 99. 99. So you were sitting uh, in Beijing, working for News Corp, yeah, that's right. So I was working at, at, at that time I was an expat and um, I, I think anyone who wants to do business in China, it, it's really great to be an expat because you learn about the market on someone else's nickel. So it's really, really important. Um, and so for me, it was no exception. I was working for someone else. And, 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 and back then, um, I, I didn't know anything about China, but I, I was very fortunate to be given the opportunity to you know, screw around for two years, you know, meeting a lot of people. Um, and then through that process of screwing around um, and, and working for a big media conglomerate, we had, you know, me and my co-founders you know, wanted to start a business, and we, we kind of looked at, you know, some of the lessons we saw from big media, and what we had we had discovered quickly was large broadcasters or media companies make money three ways: news, sports, and entertainment. And so we um, were just. You know, news obviously is very sensitive in China, although I do think that there is still opportunities in that space, but too sensitive and it was something I didn't want to do. Entertainment, possible, and sport. And because I had worked on a sports project at News Corp, it seemed to make a lot of sense. So me and my two co-founders, we threw that inspiration from a broadcast model, which I'm not saying that was the correct way to think about it, but back then, you have to give us some credit. This is 1999. It's like Web 0.5, right? Yeah, these are the kind of guys that go that, that are struggling with music industry, right? Right, right. And now we see all the music guys. Here. So, so I guess something's. So you're in Beijing, and you say, right, we're gonna.